Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is Saturday, May 9th, 2020. It is 2.19 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States in Rochester, New York. And this is just my update for today. My check-in, see how I'm doing with my mental health and my physical health and the coronavirus. Um, keep watching the news and it seems like things get eaten. Things are getting worse and worse. More and more people are becoming unemployed, losing their business, unable to feed their kids. Um, the picture looks pretty bleak for a lot of people. More than my situation, for sure. I'm lucky that I have what I have. I have a steady income. I'm able to pay my bills. Um, and I'm grateful for all those things. And there are people in situations a lot worse than mine. And I hope they do well. One of the things you could do to help people who need food in America is to give to a charity called Food Link in upstate New York. It's also in Rochester, New York, which is upstate New York. Giving money or food donations to Food Link goes a long way to uh, feeding people who don't have money for food in the upstate New York area. At least I think it's mostly upstate. Um, I give money to Food Link on a regular basis. Monthly, they just take it automatically out of my checking account, on my debit card. Um, it's fucking snowing outside, which is always depressing. It's May 9th and it's fucking snowing outside. That's just depressing. Um, I have a very little physical energy today. I feel very tired. Not sick with coronavirus, not anything that bad. I'm just saying my mood is not as good as it could be. I have less m motivation to do anything when it's fucking snowing outside. And I was hoping that by May 9th, the snow would be over with. And it's not just Rochester, New York. It's the whole Northeast is getting this fucking Arctic winter storm. I mean, it's only in flurries in Rochester. I suppose some of the other parts of upstate New York and Northeast United States are getting heavier snow than we're getting. Um, but still, it's just depressing to be seeing snow. Um, somebody asked me to do another video on caffeine. Um, I don't have much to add than I did in my last video I did on caffeine. I used to abuse caffeine pills, and that was really stupid because Caffeine tablets and caffeine in general provokes panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And in my case, it was making me vomit, uh, tremors, rapid breathing, sweating. I'm not even sure why I took caffeine tablets. It certainly didn't have any benefit to it. And it made me feel sick to my stomach. And I would also vomit from taking in caffeine tablets. Caffeine tablets are like 200 milligrams depending on what brand you buy, like Vibrin is 200 milligrams in each pill. That's the equivalent of four cups of coffee in one fucking pill. So if you do what I was doing, I was taking six, seven, eight pills a day. That's a lot of caffeine. And I'm surprised I didn't kill myself because it's very possible to overdose on caffeine, especially in tablet form. It's hard to overdose with caffeine if you're drinking coffee because you would vomit up the coffee long before you were able to overdose. But uh, it's possible to overdose on caffeine tablets. Um, if somebody tried to commit suicide, that would, that would be an extremely uncomfortable death, to say the least. Um, because you would be, your heart would be pounding, you'd be scared as hell. You'd be sweating, you'd be vomiting. I mean, I've been through all this. Not that I didn't use caffeine as a suicide attempt, I took enough caffeine in to know what it would feel like if I tried that. Um, so it would be very uncomfortable. And caffeine in general is very uncomfortable. Um, I still have a cup of coffee in the morning and in the afternoon. But uh, I don't use caffeine as much as I used to. Um, it was obvious that I was abusing it because my hands would tremor. My body would shake. And also if you're taking too much caffeine, you can have seizures. Um, 
which can kill you. So caffeine is not something that isn't a drug. It's very much a drug. It's the most unregulated drug. I mean, even children have access to it. If a ch child walks into a 7-Eleven and buys a Pepsi, Coke, or Mountain Dew, they have access to caffeine. Um, the other interesting thing about caffeine is you can find it in some over-the-counter migraine headache preparations. Um, Excedrin is a perfect example of that. Excedrin contains the main ingredient of Tylenol, aspirin, and caffeine, and it's supposed to be helpful for migraine headaches. But the problem with caffeine is um, withdrawal from caffeine itself can cause headaches. So you become dependent on it to avoid headaches because if you stop, you go through withdrawal. So caffeine does have withdrawal symptoms. symptoms. Um, it can make you very have really, really bad headaches, especially when you're taking caffeine in the amounts that I was taking it in. I was taking tons and tons of it. And to suddenly abruptly stop, I've gone through headaches. I've also gone through the situation where I've taken tons of caffeine and end up in a psychiatric hospital where they don't serve caffeine. Um, at best, you'll get decaffeinated coffee. Um, so I would be in the psychiatric ward going through massive headaches because I was withdrawing from caffeine. And that starts just within a few hours of your last cup of coffee. Um, so caffeine is just generally very unpleasant. It's not something that I want to use that much anymore. I still use it to some extent, like I said, a couple of co cups of coffee a day because I'm on a lot of medications and uh, my medications make me drowsy. That's true, I suppose, for just about any psychiatric patient who takes major tranquilizers or minor tranquilizers or even antidepressants because all those drugs can cause drowsiness. They help control your psychiatric symptoms. But they have side effects in them of themselves, including feeling tired and drained and lethargic, unmotivated. Um, one of the worst side effects I've had from my main drug, Seroquel, was tiredness. I'm at, on a thousand milligrams a night, so I'm bound to be very tired from that. Um, but also I've had weight gain from Seroquel. Seroquel shuts off that part of your brain that tells you that you're full with food. And so you're always hungry, always wanting more food. So I've put on 30 pounds in the past year just from my Seroquel and overeating. I'm going to try to start dieting again. At one point I got up to 260 pounds and I was able to lose that 60 pounds and brought myself back down to 200 pounds. I'm about five foot nine. So 200 pounds is pretty uh, average for somebody my height. Um, but now I'm up to 230, a pound, 230 pounds and possibly going higher than that if I don't stop overeating. Um, so that's all for now. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Press the notification bell so you know when I get new videos out. And um, share my videos on social networks.